In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to use GPT-5 to create videos, reels, and content, and auto-post that to your socials like Instagram and TikTok without lifting a finger. This edit and workflow works with video generation models like Cdance and Video3 and gets plugged into an auto-social posting tool called Postis. If that sounds interesting to you, let's dive right in. So in this workflow, what we're going to do is we're going to take a video generation workflow, which I've done in a previous video, and I'll link that right up here and also down in the description below. But essentially, what we want to do is to take that entire workflow, which output a video generated by BO3, and kick it to a GPT-5 caption agent. And of course, what we'll do is also change the video prompt agent, which generates a prompt for VO3 into a GPT-5 model, so that the entirety of the workflow is run on GPT-5. Because as most of you already realized, GPT-5 really does take it to the next level when compared to the previous models that GPT have released. And if you haven't checked out how GPT-5 compares with the previous models as well as Grok4, do check out my other video where I did a side-by-side -side comparison on what that looks like. And also again, I'll link it up here and down in the description below. But once that gets out of the caption agent, what we'll do is a three node workflow that posts the video as well as the captioned to the social channel of your choice via Post-it. And for those of you who are not sure how to change your AI agent from other versions of GPT to GPT-5, well, it's super easy. What you can do is once you've got your OpenAI account or your Open Router account connected, and if you don't know how to do that, I also have another video where I go through the step-by-step -step process on how to get signed up on OpenAI and get it connected to your NADN. But essentially, once you're connected, what you want to do is to choose your model. And if you were in GPT-4 before, you just have to scroll up or down and you'll be able to find GPT-5 and it's as easy as that. So now we're going to start with the skeleton of what we had from the previous workflow. And if you want a free template that I've shared previously, you can just go check out my other video. But after I'm done building this workflow, I will also paste the free template uh, down in the description below. So you guys can just download that and start using it too. But in this case, as you can see, the trigger for the workflow is a chat message received. And you can obviously replace this with an on-schedule trigger, which will then trigger the entire workflow to auto-generate and auto-post all your videos and reels at the same time every day or every couple hours, whatever the case may be, right? But in this case, I wanted to just use the chat message trigger because this will allow me to type into the message and kind of specify what kind of video ideas that I wanted to generate. And then they'll kick it into the video prompt agent, which will optimize the video prompt that is going to send to VO3 API. But really what I want to show here is the step-by-step -step guide as to how to build the auto posting part of the workflow because we've already covered the video generation part in that separate video. And in this case, what you want to do is to go to postis.com and essentially sign up. And once you're logged in, you can see that there are a couple of pricing tiers. It is a paid platform. However, you can start on a free plan, which is seven day free, just to try it and take it for a spin. And you might notice that the $29 per month is basically toe to toe with what Blotato pricing is per month. And if you want to check out a similar workflow that I built with Blotato, I'll link it up here also in the description below. But in this case, once you've activated your free trial, you're going to see this page, which is in your dashboard. And what you want to do, and as you can see, I've already connected my Instagram channel here. I'm not usually on TikTok, so I didn't connect any TikTok channels here. But the first time you start, you're going to want to add channel. And it's pretty easy to add channel. You know, we've got all these platforms that you can choose from, and it's pretty straightforward. You just need to sign in and you're good to go. In this case, once you are signed in, where you want to go is you want to go to settings. And this is where you're going to find the API keys and you go to public API. And essentially you can copy your API keys from here. And of course, before we play around with the API keys and the HTTP request node, what we want to do is to just go to the public API documentation here. And the first thing you want to do is to go to the upload new file curl command. And in this case, we're just going to copy the endpoint here, copy and go back to the workflow. And in this case, I'm going to add a HTTP request node with a post API. And I'm going to copy the URL endpoint. Once I hit copy, it actually copied the post command. So I'm going to take that away, right? And of course, there's authentication here. So we're going to want to hit generic credential type, header auth, and create new credential. And we're going to call it post this account demo and essentially hit reveal and copy the entire API key. Just copy the values here. In terms of name, you want to fill in authorization as the name here and hit save. So now that the credential has been safe, we can go back. We want to scroll down and we're going to toggle send body here. And we're going to choose an NADN binary file because what happens is we want to upload the binary file of the video. That's the file type that the API will receive. And in terms of the data field name, we're just going to name it data, right? Because that is the default data type or data name that is going to be generated 
by the download video and the node previously. So we're gonna rename this to upload to post this. But before I move on to the next node, I realized that I've actually missed out a node here, which is to download the video. So architecturally what's going on is that I'm telling the video prompt agent to create a prompt for the video, which goes into the VO3 API. And we wait 30 seconds to get the set API and need some time to process. And this is just an if loop to make sure that if the video isn't ready, that the workflow doesn't break down, just keep spinning until it's ready. And then once that's ready, it goes to the GPT-5 caption agent, which will create a caption based on your video. And then what we want to do is for it to download the video file. So we're gonna call a HTTP request node again. And this time it's just download video HTTP request node. And we're gonna stick with get. And I'm gonna need the URL from the previous node. So I'm gonna just pre-field this to test for now so that it will run. And I'm gonna now do a test run so that it runs all the way to this particular node before I link it up. So in this case, what I wanna do, I'm gonna ask it to create an Instagram reel to promote a high rocks gym called Elite Fitness. Of course, this is a completely fictitious gym, but I just wanted to use it as a use case. And I'm also giving it some information about the styling that I want, which I want it to be more elegant, promote high face thrilling effect while remaining on brand, avoid placing too many texts in the video just to make sure, because typically VO3 does kind of mess up when there are too many texts. So I'm just gonna hit that. And as you can see, it goes to the GPT-5 prompt agent, all right, now where we are is we have the video generated and the caption generated as well. And we're encountering an error here in the download video node, of course, because what I've put in into the URL field is just a test. And what we wanna do now is to grab the video URL and where you can get that is from the video 3 get node. And what you wanna drag is under output, you'll see a URL link and we wanna just grab that and drop it in the URL field. And this is going to be dynamic. And for authentication, basically because this is a publicly available URL, you don't need any authentication, you can download it. And of course, what we wanna do is to go to add option and under response, we wanna select a response format in file and the output field to be just by default data. All right, so we're gonna execute step here. As you can see, it generated a file called data and this is basically the video in binary file. And let me just download that and open it up. Looking okay. There was a little bit of a weird little transition there just now, but um, it's okay. I think we're good to go here. So anyway, just wanted to show that we need basically to make it into a binary format in order for us to go to the next step. So the next step here, let me configure that node. So open that up. We received the data in binary format. And what we want to do is just hit execute step. See what happens here. It says bad request, please check your parameters. So I think the mistake that I made here is to select any then binary file here. So just a little note here, based on post this documentation, we are supposed to choose from data as the format or the content type. And under the name, what we want to do is we name it file and the form to be any then binary file. This is where we specify what type. And also we're going to name it data for the input data field name. So let's execute step. So there you go. We've got an output here and it's basically uploaded to post this. Now you may be wondering what exactly we're doing with, you know, we're downloading here in binary and then we're uploading it to posters, what is going on. So what's happening is that because some of these social platforms like Instagram, TikTok, they may be very picky in terms of the image URL that you can push directly onto their platform. They do have a set of whitelisted providers, which will just allow you to post directly onto those social platforms seamlessly. In this case, we're uploading it to posters as the provider. And essentially that's just gonna work seamlessly when it's trying to push to our socials. So the next node that we want to hit here is the is the last HTTP request node to post this. So this is post this um, post to socials. And in this case, I'm gonna just do Instagram. So go back to the documentation and we're gonna scroll down to create an update post. We're gonna copy this over, but I'm gonna just do a little formatting because some of these information are not required in the way we build our workflow. Like for example, the type, you know, we don't need the draft or schedule we just need it to be posted immediately, which is now, and etc. So what we wanna do here, we wanna go back to post the documentation and basically copy the post URL endpoint. In fact, I don't wanna copy the whole thing and just a URL endpoint here and go back to the workflow and paste the URL in. Authentication is the same thing, generic credential type, header auth, and we're gonna pick the right one, which is post this account demo. And what we wanna do is we're gonna to toggle the send body and it is going to be in JSON format and we're gonna use raw JSON because what we wanna do is to go back to the API page and essentially copy this entire chunk 
and go back to paste it into the JSON body. Now I'm gonna blow this up and there are a couple of things that we wanna do here because not all of this information is going to be required in our payload. So what we wanna do is we wanna format it to look something like this. Just to run you through what I did, I have specified the type to be now, which means every time the workflow runs, it's going to pose immediately. This is a short link component, which I don't need. I'm gonna put that as false. And then the date, what I did was I dragged the date component or the now component from the variable here and added a dot to ISO bracket at the end just to make it into an ISO format, which is the acceptor format by the API. And of course the content is basically the caption that's gonna to go to your Instagram posts. And where I dragged that is simply from GPT-5 caption agent. And I dragged the entire content into the field here. With the ID, there are two IDs. This is the image ID, which is from the upload to post this note. The reason why we wanna drag this ID is because this is the ID that's going to recognize to grab the images from Postis database. And the path is basically the path URL here under the upload to post this note as well. And you may notice that there's an ID here under integration. So what this is, is this is basically the channel ID. And the way you can grab this is to go to your dashboard on post this and click on the three dot next to your channel once you've got it connected and basically just copy the channel ID and you can basically paste it here. I'm not gonna make it dynamic or anything because the constant ID that I'm gonna use for my channel. And for those of you who are not so comfortable working with a JSON format and maybe you wanna stay away from even vibe coding this, what I'll do is I'll post a JSON chunk in the description below, but at the same time, like I said, I'm gonna be providing the free template uh, for you to just copy and start using, right? So that will be in the description below as well. All right, so I'm gonna execute step here. So it seems we're encountering an error here. It turns out that my method was get before I just didn't toggle it to post, so it should work now. So execute step, and there you go. Uh, there's the output payload now, uh, as we can see. And typically that means it's a successful posting. So let's go back to postage and scroll down on Tuesday. So as you can see, it's just got posted. So let's go back to my Instagram page and hit refresh. And there we go, and there we go. That's the video with the caption and the audio as well. All right, so I hope that was helpful in kind of showing you how to put together a straightforward workflow to auto-generate the video using VO3 or CDANS. And some of you are probably asking how much did it cost me to run something like this. So the VO3 is slightly costlier. So it's $3.20 on WaveSpeed to generate that video. So it might be prohibitive for some of the use cases. In that case, I would typically just switch over to CDANCE. For your reference, CDANCE is about 15 to 30 cents to up to 60 cents, depending on the kind of quality that you want. And if you're doing a lot of posts, that just makes some sense. Postis itself is $29 a month. It's the same price as Botato. So, you know, you can choose whichever one that you think suits your needs. So I hope that was helpful. And as I mentioned, I will be sharing the free template down in the description below. And as always, if you enjoy the content, please consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next one.